up and welcome back to Sherlock 2000's Land Rover Garage and many interesting things. Um, it has been quite some time since I've actually recorded any sort of content really because I've, I've got stuff going on in my life that's sort of keeping me from my happy place really but uh, I did set to about a week ago trying to, to, to edit and finish up the, the video uh, of, of fitting the the roof rack here, the brackets for the roof rack and the roof rack as well, uh, and I realised fairly quickly that I hadn't actually got any sort of introductory video so it sort of stalled play. Anyway, um, that's what I'm doing now, I'm recording the introduction for past Firth, who's going to tell you how I fit this roof rack and how you mount the brackets and, and you'll see me in a minute go back to video content I took months ago where I actually received the uh, the the brackets back from powder coating um anyway uh, I'll I'll cut to that shortly but I did want to just say that um because I haven't recorded a lot of content I do have a couple of videos planned for coming up but uh, I also have a, a conference in Poland an academic conference in Poland which is actually my proper well I don't know you call it a proper job but I, what I'm actually meant to be doing with my life <laughs> and, uh, and and so I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, push out some content while I'm gone because I don't know that I've got enough time to record any uh, but I will just try and, and do two or three shorter videos uh, one of the ones one of the videos that I've got coming up is, is actually a sort of an history of, of my Land Rover ownership really going back a couple of folk have asked me uh, to do one going back all of the different vehicles I've had and I have had lots and I have sort of actually asked my mum to, uh, to, to pull out some of the old photographs from back home and send them over but we can't find some of them and, and so I, I'm going to try and uh, collect some when I go back to visit in August and see if I can't bring some back and then I'll scan them and, and, and I'll do that bit of a video but if, if they come first I might just record that and then perhaps you'll see that while I'm away or maybe you won't depending upon how excited I get um, and I've got a couple of other bits of things coming up uh, to, to record for you but uh, what I was going to ask is if you had any interest in me recording some content for your Range Rover based uh, then I would, or Land Rover based broadly speaking then I'd be happy to or just leave some notes in the comments and uh, and I'll put some videos together if I get the time anyway uh, that's basically all, all this bit of an introduction is for uh, please do continue to like and subscribe he says posting the big shiny thing here uh, to, to the channel and that'll help me know that uh, the video is getting out there and you're getting notified when you get new videos and, and hopefully that'll be useful to you um, and me right so the here we have the sort of finished welded piece anyway um, and what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll I'll just bring these up to the camera in a minute but um, this is uh, the model for this piece and, and you can see how what we've done with the uh, the shapes is to basically cut them out of one piece of steel and uh, and then just weld them in place the the most complex part um, was welding this this gusset piece in place actually not this one but this one because and it'll be hard to show you I'll have to come up here but um, this piece has uh, multiple different angles as you can see uh, and trying to make that uh, smooth and nice and, and look the part was a bit more complex because it required several angles uh, of bending to be put into the metal to fit that nice edge um, whereas with this piece here I've mounted uh, the the end piece this end gusset uh, just within uh, this would have been an easier design but just the way this ended up being constructed meant that we had to fiddle about with this now my thanks uh, to throttle stop garage for for um, I'm just going through a bit of separation drama at the moment, so I'm I'm kind of my head's a bit of a mess really. So I asked my pal if he wouldn't just mind uh, putting these together for me once we'd cut all the metal and and uh, I went over today and I'll show you a bit of footage of today uh, while the sun was out uh, to mount them on and to see if they fitted and and then we added a slight bend. 
Uh, you can just see, well perhaps you can't actually, but there's a, ever such a slight bend in here, probably about three sixteenths of an inch, uh, just because the, the, the roof of the Range Rover's curved. Here we are at the garage of any interesting and random things, where it's not my garage, it's, some, it's my pal's garage, throttle stop garage in fact. I hadn't just had a chance to come over again and do these, so my pal's just knocked them up for me. Uh, and uh, he's done an absolutely fantastic job. These we worked together on getting this design uh, sorted and planned out. And as you saw in the last video, we've done a couple of test fits uh, to make sure that the, the the all the holes and everything line up. And we've modified everything slightly, a couple of tweaks on the angles and a couple of different uh, adjustments. <laughs> and we've got another one in. Um, it, We've got another one coming. We've put an arc in here, and you can see there's a small gap at the front, but uh, as you can see here, but uh, there is that foam stuff that's got to go on underneath it, and there's a an eighth of an inch bow in that already. But you can see what we've had to do is widen these out quite a lot more uh, to to go round that kind of uh, that peculiarly positioned bulge i'm not quite sure why it's like that but anyway there's a there's a touch of rock in this front one but by the time the rack's on it and the foam's in it and there's a big bolt in it and the bolt in this one goes um you can't see it here obviously because it's, it's not here the bolt in this one goes right in the center uh and so by the time that's in and pulled it all down with that foam in that'll fit spot on and, and it looks like that obviously these are going to be powder coated in black to fit but there you are, champion that isn't it and so we added that bend in there uh, we also have a bend in the rear one as well uh, which side was that, that was the driver's side so here's the driver's side um, so we've added a, a bend in this as well uh, you, it's much harder to see in this because it's longer and it is only about an eighth so uh, I mean the construction system's broadly similar as you can see um, we, we we cut and, and tapered this piece and then bent it uh, just to give I don't know a bit, a bit of shape to the front and, and make it more firm uh, and then this piece is broadly the same as the other piece now when I have produced this the angle you see here re recreates the the angle on the back of the Range Rover where the um, where the a b c d pillar goes um and the front ones have a slightly different angle and these are the front are slightly more raked uh, to match the to match the uh, the windscreen so the construction is broadly the similar the 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 difference is uh uh, the, diff the only one that's not the same really I suppose in construction wise is, is this piece and, and we um, I had a much shallower gusset here as I did in here and, and my pal decided that it needed a bit more support just to make it look finished and I think he was right in doing that if, you, if I take my model this one's about right you can see this is almost identical to uh, what we created but on my model of the front piece uh, you can see I've left a much uh, much less material here in the back and, and my pallet throttle stop has welded it all the way along um, and the same at the front now I don't know whether that will I don't know whether that's going to create noise or, or lose noise the funny thing about uh, the funny thing about wind noise is that it's a bit of a it's a dark art really uh, and I have no idea whether this is going to make a lot of noise or not a lot of noise. The D5 rack on that rack on the D5 was quite loud, uh, but curiously enough, the D, the the rack on the Defender was not loud at all. In fact, I think I think you'll have seen my video where I've, I've reported on the roof rack and noticed only a five decibel increase on the Defender. Um, and I find that interesting because uh, the racks are almost identical. In fact, I don't know that there's much difference in them at all, if anything. They might just have drilled an extra couple of holes. Um, but having pulled the Defender rack apart and, and the D5 rack apart, I can't see any difference whatsoever. Uh, anyway, so whether or not it'll make any noise is a different matter. And I'll only know that, I suppose, when I actually put it on and we'll see how it goes. Um, I 
I've just uh, I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll get these powder coated and then I'll put the um, uh, I'll put that foamy squishy stuff in and then what I'll likely do is I'll likely bolt everything together loosely and then cinch it up bit by bit because the holes aren't exact they're very very close they're probably within an eighth of an inch uh, but they're not exact whereas the other rack on the D5 was absolutely spot on um, so I think I'll just I'll, I'll cinch it up bit by bit and then hopefully it'll sort of tighten itself down there's no uh, the holes for these you can see they're in the bottom here uh, the reason there is two uh, is that we had originally measured these brackets uh, to stand up a little further and um, that required the bottom coming in a bit but of course because we've now angled this down uh, that shoved the bottom out and we've re-drilled the hole it's harder to weld that up so I'm just going to put uh, a little cap in there uh, but you can see that um, these are the well this isn't the bolt the bolts this is the bolt um, but the bolts will fit in like this uh, and it's a bit of a it's a bit of a tight fit uh, to get them in but they need to be this long as you can see because this is how much it's got to screw down into and and this is where it fits so you need a good half an inch below that so the bolt is actually surprisingly long I think these are 50 mil bolts but um, anyway so that's that uh, and like I said the only the only exception to the the whole rule that we've got above is this very peculiar um, right hand side one and, and I'm not sure why the the blister that holds the bolt is longer in this one i've no idea uh, but it is there's a, a little there's a little prominence as, as i'll show you the photograph uh, and this one is much wider than all of the others so um this required some post fit fit if you see what i mean um anyway that's it what i'll do is i'll, I'll take these off now uh, to powder coating tonight and fit them tomorrow and then with any luck uh, the Range Rover will have a roof rack and I'll, I'll do one final video sort of thing putting it all together and, and I guess that will be that right so here we are we've got a box full of bits I'll just turn big light on it and I've got a pal come give me a hand so here they are look these are the brackets and I'll just show you these uh, they all powder coated and, and this is how they are uh, and they've done a grand job really I, I I should have perhaps ground these down a bit with one of my files because um, files my grinders die grinders because all the other edges are grand but um, this has remained a bit sort of showy but anyway you can see from here of course how, how nice they look they're grand aren't they um, and so basically that's that's it they've come all wrapped up in in a, in a fancy thing uh, to protect them and I'm going to try and not scratch the powder coating uh, I had these done by a local company called Kiwi Iron uh, and the uh, they only charged me hundred dollars for a lot uh, so that weren't bad at all were it anyway that's that's the brackets and now we'll be able to throw those on and uh, should be tip top right so there we are look that looks proper don't it I'm just going to pull back a bit here uh, now I've had them powder coated as you can see and uh, they're all fitted now I applied that foam that la layer of foam that I mentioned to you that's on the uh, original and genuine uh, D5 and uh, you can just see it there and on the defender rack and then at the back here uh, where there was a slight gap well there isn't one now basically I can't just zoom in any more than that but there's no uh, there isn't a spot there uh, no no gaps or anything I have um, installed uh, high tensile bolts here in black so that they're uh, sort of a bit more hidden because this is the one that you can actually see I'll see if I can't just show you that uh, you can see there the, the bolt um, and the rack is uh, it fits superbly there are three bolts now and I've fitted 8.8 .8 all the way around um, 
the bolts themselves aren't going to be the weak point there's a third mounting rail in the middle now the only thing i haven't done and i'll show you in a minute is i haven't screwed through that center bracket at the moment it's just there for i guess you want to call it pressure you know it takes the weight but uh, i will have to do something with it because it'll probably vibrate in the in the wind i haven't put any balls through it because i don't have a plate yet to to squeeze it down and i'll show you what i mean in a minute but um so that's the rack uh, from the back and it fits perfectly there now because this is a d5 rack and there's slightly more taper on the d5 rack than there is on the range rover you will see that the back hangs in a little bit further than does the front and there's not really much i can do about that because that's a function of the way the rack um, is shaped over the over the and i'll show you a photograph of that in a minute as well i've taken some top down photographs and you'll see what i mean um and uh what i'm saying about the the bolts uh we'll just show you here that there's again this little tiny bit of foam here has just taken up uh all of the gap that you can see i mean you can see probably there's uh, slightly more of a gap here than there is here um but i mean really in terms of everything sitting nicely it's it, it's fine you know i think uh, it's certainly fast um it's a solid rack now so it's not going anywhere now the bits that i was talking about were these here uh, i don't have another one of these because mine's a d5 rack and it only came with two four of them you know one for the one for each mount and so i, I need to make another one of these plates and then another insert in here which you can sort of just see if i move down you know you can sort of see that anti-crush thing um the other thing i don't have and I'll, I'll show you the other side is i don't have another bottom piece that sort of pulls the whole rack down onto the um i'll just try and zoom in it'll be a bit uh juddery but you'll see that bottom piece there uh i don't have another one of those and that uh pulls the the whole rack down and situates it on on the mounts as it were uh, and i basically don't have another one of them so there's no taking doom champion and of course when you look at the vehicle uh as a whole it looks sort of seamless it looks intentional really and i quite like the way that the aluminium on the top matches the the rims as well because that looks sort of meant too so that's it uh, i'm going to do a a test video uh well not a test video but another test shortly to determine how loud it is because i won't know how loud it is until i hit the highway the front of these racks do have a built-in air deflector uh, and mine sits very low now to the to the bonnet and it uh, the bonnet to the roof and it might <laughs> might whistle so I'll, I'll have to just I'll have to just hit the highway and see how that goes now but uh, there you go I'll just give you another closer look up of the underside if I can get my gimbal to move uh, and there we have it so the only thing I've got left is those two pieces and then broadly speaking uh it's done basically i'll just come round to the front and that's the front and so there we have it a d5 rack uh fitted to the l322 range rover um the only thing i have to advise you really in terms of uh guidance on on the trickier parts um it's clear that uh the there are a number of compound angles and building quite an elaborate bracket like this is not something that would be easily uh recreatable even with the even with the the models that we've got for the parts um what i will do is i'll try and cut those models apart and then i'll i'll make some drawings i think and and if you want to have a go at it i suppose you can um i might have a bit of a go at making some cores or at least going over to, to um uh to foundry in town and seeing if they've got some material that they use for core making and, and perhaps that way uh, i'll be able to recreate these because as they stand 
uh, I mean they're perfect as they are but of course there, there was quite a lot of effort in, in welding everything together there's probably I'd guess there's four days of welding and, and cutting and all of that kind of stuff in it really uh, and then another day to make the models but um, with a casting of course once you've got the core you can just recreate it as you want what I'll do is I'll, I'll I'll go over there and I'll see if if they can uh, give me some have a do at these at these and we'll see if we can't make the patterns but uh, any uh, ambiguities in angles that we've got here because they're not perfect but any ambiguities are taken up by that one eighth foam strip uh, because between the two that's a that's a quarter of an inch uh, top and bottom and uh, and it, and it works quite well the the these brackets the, because of the the way that the bolts are positioned they are awkward to get the bolts in uh not to get them in the bracket but actually to get them in the bracket and then try and get the thread started because you you're hampered by the you're hampered by everything basically is what you're hampered by um but i mean as you can see i mean they look proper don't they and and uh, absent of a bit of I have just noticed I've got some marker on here now. I'll try and clean that up. But um, absent of that, I mean, you'll you'll see that it's a grand job. It, it looks. What I want to do, and I've said this all along, and I'm probably repeating myself here. But what I want, or what I wanted to do, is I wanted a roof rack that looked like it actually came from Land Rover because I wanted the design aesthetic to sort of pair well with the vehicle. Now, Andrew Nix's Voyager racks are great uh, because they really do suit that G4 Challenge look. Um, but that aesthetic's quite... I'm going to use the word dated, but I don't mean that in an offensive way. What is quite dated because that safety devices style of rack came out with a, the, in 92 with the very first D1s. Um, and suited that vehicle but things have changed their aesthetic in terms of the design of the vehicles and, and I don't think and I still don't think that that G4 rack really suited the Range Rover in, in, in a way that it wanted to. This rack is kind of a bit behind the times in terms of its design aesthetic because while it while it clearly suits this vehicle perfectly it was actually designed for the D5 which came along in 2017 a good I don't know uh, what was this 2002 so a good 15 years after this hit the streets uh, but as you can see this design aesthetic suits the vehicle quite well um, that's not to say that the, the the tubular rack doesn't do that either but uh, just that thank you very much um, later, Jip, come on. Uh, it's not to say that the tubular rack doesn't suit the vehicle at all. That's not what I'm saying. But in terms of in terms of styling, this is a lot less expedition, even though it is an expedition rack. Um, of course, the downside is that there's no there's no ladder for this, and, and I, if I continued down this line, I would have to think about trying to find one of these rails and then making some sort of I don't know aluminium casing for the side or something I mean it's doable but I just have to think what what I just have to think about how I'll go about it one of these rails on the D5 rack is actually designed to be removed because it um, it slides the, uh, the the sunroof slides back and you can delete that rail altogether if you want it to slide all the way back um, or you can so I, I suppose I could take one out and then shuffle the rest around and, and have do but anyway uh, a ladder is possible I, I imagine with just a bit of welding and then coming up with some sort of attachment like Andrew's got on his um, uh, Voyager racks Andrew Nix's uh, tubular rack does have a tubular ladder for the back but I'd like to stick with this aesthetic if I went that direction anyway um, it is possible uh, it, it is a bit more effort than you'd perhaps want it to be but as you can see the radiuses on this um, keep in, in line with the original even though the original is cast and, and these are made I think I've said this before too these are, are welded out to 3 16th steel which is <laughs> which is far far more steel than you'd need on this job really I mean there's the, the, this rack here is made out of aluminium uh, so the brackets are much stronger than the frame of the uh, frame of the 
the rack really but um anyway so i hope you like that i hope that's been helpful this is the last of the three-part videos and um and i suppose uh well, we'll just have to give it a ride and drive and, and check how loud it is or isn't uh, so thank you very much do tune in do like and share uh for more of the same and uh, we'll see you next time cheerio